I came back from holiday, the heating isn't working, we don't have any hot water and our balcony door won't close so you can hear everything that's going on and there's a construction site going on outside so sorry for all the noise. Hi everyone, it's Tasha and welcome to another recipe video. And today we have caught up with my backlog so this video is much more recent and we're going to be making creme brulee sweet potato. I'll admit this is another Japan inspired recipe. I know, I know, I can't let the trip go. But this time it's because I missed out on something. There's a shop in Japan, a chain now actually because they're doing really well, they've gone viral, called Imo Pipi and they specialise in all things sweet potato. They do a classic baked roasted sweet potato with butter, they do one with ice cream on top, they do one with creme brulee, which is the one I'm going to make today, and they do one which is soft serve ice cream with baked sweet potato chunks at the bottom and sort of like a Mont Blanc sweet potato paste piped on top. So while I was in Japan, of course I wanted to visit them. It sounded amazing. And what I really wanted was that creme brulee sweet potato. So I got to the shop and I ordered it in my broken Japanese and the cashier noted down, yep, one creme brulee sweet potato. And then she added, but did you know that our Mont Blanc style, the piped sweet potato on top of the ice cream is our best seller. And I did that awkward thing of when, when you know something that someone's telling you, but they're being really nice, you want to humour them. So it's like, oh, oh really? And she said, yes, yes, everyone loves to try it. It's really popular on social media. In my brain, I was like, yeah, I know. But she was really nice. And you know what? When it comes to food, I'm a pushover. I'm easily sweet. So I was like, yeah, yeah, well, you know what? Add that to my order too, why not? Absolutely great choice, so that's one creme brulee sweet potato and one soft serve sweet potato ice cream. So I waited for them and they showed me how they did it. They have a little machine where they extrude the sweet potato paste on top of the soft serve and that was pretty quick. They gave it to me and I was enjoying that and waiting for my creme brulee sweet potato which never came. Mr Tash Cakes and I are pretty chill people and we were just happy to relax and enjoy our soft serve and we were looking at Google Maps because we were going to Kadaiji Temple later to see the autumn illuminations at night. Beautiful by the way, I really recommend it. And then we noticed oh, loads of people are getting creme brulee sweet potatoes that came after us and I remembered, oh yeah, I should check on that. So I went up and said, excuse me, uh, we're still waiting on our creme brulee sweet potato and the cashier, she was really sweet, she went, eh? Just a second, I'm really sorry. And she like tapped on the computer and then she went to the back. And then she came back, she said, I'm so sorry when I was recommending that ice cream to you, I accidentally switched the order instead. So you only paid for the ice cream and we only made you the ice cream. I'm really sorry. I totally didn't notice I only got charged for the one thing. Usually I'm really good when I pay for stuff, I make sure it all adds up. But in the moment, I was really tired. We'd walked nearly 30,000 steps that day. I was exhausted, also still a bit jet lagged excited about Kodaiji Temple, excited about the ice cream, a bit flustered, so I just took my card and beep, I didn't really question it at the time. So partially my fault too, and unfortunately because it was already getting quite late and we needed to make it in time for the Kodaiji Autumn Illuminations, I didn't have time to order it again. I really said, don't, don't worry, it happens, it's absolutely not a problem, we really love the ice cream. And so we left. Creme brulee, sweet potato -less. However, since I have the capacity to make this at home potentially, why not make it at home? And we're going to do so with this thing. This is a Japanese sweet potato. It is denser, starchier and paler in size than an orange sweet potato. I like to think of them as American sweet potatoes. And while American sweet potatoes are a bit gooey and squishier inside when you roast them, Japanese sweet potatoes are more... The texture is almost cakey, like a really moist cake. Not saying that's a bad thing for the American sweet potatoes, I love American sweet potatoes. These are just different. And since Imo Pipi use this type to make their creme brulee sweet potatoes and their regular roasted sweet potatoes, of course I'm going to use this one. There's just one thing that Imo Pipi do that I cannot do, and that's honey age them. I don't know exactly how they do it, but a lot of press releases about Imo Pipi say that they both age their sweet potatoes some say at a, a low temperature, 11 to 13 degrees C, at a really, really high humidity, and they don't say how long or how they store them. And that process of aging the sweet potatoes increases the sugar content inside because the starch is converted into sugar while it ages. But also some people say that it's aged with honey. I'm actually not sure if this is a euphemism because when you roast a sweet potato, any sweet potato really, it does get a little bit gooey, syrupy, honey-ish. And other press releases are kind of rolling with it and say, oh, it's got a high honey content instead of a high sugar content. And 
people are getting a bit confused. I'm confused because I, I, I haven't been able to get a straight story about how they age their sweet potatoes. So I'm just going to use the sweet potato as is. It's still going to be super, super sweet. It's still going to be super delicious, but it probably won't have that almost candied sugar content that Emil Pupi's potatoes have. And if I ever do find out how to honey age a sweet potato, I will share that information with you. But for now, no more off the shelf sweet potato it is. So, with all that said, let's go to the kitchen and see how it's done. First things first, we're going to preheat the oven to 160 degrees C, so a little bit on the cool side as ovens go. So here I've got four Japanese sweet potatoes. I'm probably only going to make up two with the creme brulee filling, but I'm going to roast all four because it seems like a bit of a shame to put the oven on for so long and only roast two potatoes. Plus, they're very easy to reheat after, so um, yeah, I'm going to have two sweet potatoes, two roasted sweet potatoes as a snack for later. Or you can just make all of them and put all the creme brulee filling inside because we are going to make enough creme brulee filling for four, but I'm only going to make up two. Anyway, let's prepare all of them. Let's um, cut off these um, stringy bits at the end of some of these here. You don't have to do this, but I need mine to fit my little baking tray. I'll just do this one as well. That'll do. And now we're going to get Stabby to um, help the potatoes release some steam when they bake because we don't want them to split and explode. And all I've done is I've popped them on a foil lined baking tray. Now some people roast these just bare as they are, some people roast them in foil. I don't know which one's best so I'm going to roast half of them in foil and half of them naked. And now all we have to do is pop these in the oven for an hour and a half. That's uh, 90 minutes. So yeah, a nice slow roast at a lowish temperature. To make the no-bake brulee topping, we're going to need two egg yolks, 30 grams of caster sugar, 10 grams of corn flour, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Let's give this a bit of a mix before we continue. Don't want any lumps. And finally, I'm going to stir in 300 millilitres of double cream. I'm just going to pour this into a small pan. I do have a small saucepan, but I'm currently using it for soup, so um, my little saucepan, my little frying pan rather, will do. As long as you have like a relatively deep small pan, it doesn't matter. Right, let's thicken this up on the stove. All I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the heat on low to medium, and I'm going to keep stirring this until it's thickened. And this is going to take just a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, no more than that. By the way, don't do what I'm doing and use an, a metal utensil on a non-stick pan because that can scrape the bottom off, that non-stick stuff off. If you have a silicon coated whisk, then use that instead. But uh, yeah, this is all I have at the moment, so I'm just being very careful not to scrape off that Teflon coating because that's quite bad. Now that it's just turning, I'm going to turn the heat right down because I don't want those egg yolks to scramble. Lift it off the heat a bit, give it a bit more of a stir. As you can see, we are just about there, just a little bit longer. Let's see, two more minutes. Right, that will do. So let's switch this off, take this off the heat, and we're going to transfer this into a bowl. We're going to work relatively quickly here because this is hot cream, and hot cream and custard things form a skin when they cool down. And we want to avoid that skin, so um, we're going to flatten this out a little bit here. And what we're going to do to avoid that skin is we're going to cover it with cling film and we're going to make sure the cling film sits on top of the actual custard. And uh, well, to be honest, it doesn't really stop the skin. It just makes it easier to lift that tough protein skin that forms as it cools down off of the custard when we take it off when it's cool, thus preventing an actual skin falling to bits and flaking off into your custard and making it not smooth. Right, so that part's done. We're just going to let this cool down to room temperature and um, it's a nice time to take a break because all we have to do is wait for this to cool and for our potatoes to bake. It's been an hour and a half, so I'm going to rescue our sweet potatoes and oh my goodness, they smell like caramel. Right, we're going to let these cool down for five to ten minutes because they're red hot. I'm going to very carefully, because there's steam in here, unwrap these foil ones, otherwise they're just going to stay red hot. 
And let's let these rest for five to 10 minutes because they are piping hot at the moment, too hot to handle. I'm going to use one of each type of potato. Here's one that we didn't wrap up. And here's one that we did. Oh, this one's juicy. I'm going to cut both open just in the middle, not going all the way down to the end. I'm going to see if there's any change, any difference rather in texture. Here we are, remember we're not slicing right down to the very bottom, we're just creating an opening. Wow, this one's very moist. Oh, like I said, it smells like caramel, it smells utterly divine. Now let's open this one. Skin's a little drier, skin's a bit like paper. Inside, ooh, inside is fluffy like cake. It's uh, less squishy moist than this one, a little drier but not dry. Yeah, like cake. Now we've got our lovely creme brulee topping. Let's peel off the top so we won't have our skin. Get rid of that. And we're going to very generously spoon some right in the middle. Oh gosh, look at how luscious that is. Right in the middle. Remember this is enough for the four of the potatoes, but we're only going to do, whoops, we're only going to do two of them. Clean that up a bit, I'll clean it up in a minute. Oh, I'm not sure if I recorded that, I just took a little bit of kitchen paper towel and cleaned up the surfaces. And now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of caster sugar over, about a teaspoon per potato, and we're just going to sprinkle it over Carefully, that's creme brulee topping. Oof, that wasn't very careful, was it? Went everywhere. There we go, I hope you have a steadier hand than me. Now we're gonna torch it. You can do this under the grill, but I have my handy cook's blade torch. If I thought it smelled good before, it smells even better now. Right, let's serve these up. These look and smell amazing. I wish the lighting were better, then you could see how glossy that brulee top is. Anyway, we are just about to dig into it. Well, I hope this makes up for um, my loss in Japan, so cheers. It does, it makes up for it. That sweet potato flesh, that's really awful way of calling it, but yep, the sweet potato flesh is so sweet because we roasted it so slowly for so long and it just gave all of those starches a chance to break down and caramelised absolutely wonderful. There's a little bit of a malty taste to it, that sweet potato malty taste, and it just goes so well with the cream. That is pretty epic. Because the sweet potato is so soft, it's so easy just to scoop up. And as you saw, we have the two different textures from the two different ways we roasted it. The one that we roasted uncovered was a little dry. It wasn't dry, it was all moist inside, but it had a fluffier, cake-like, spongy kind of texture. And the wrapped up one, because we didn't let any steam or moisture escape, it became really fudgy, kind of. Super, super moist. So it's up to you what kind of texture you want. I'm not entirely sure how Emil PP bake theirs. I think they just bake them uncovered so they have the more cakey texture. But I really like the moist, creamy texture of the covered ones too. So there you go, creme brulee roasted sweet potatoes. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe video and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for my next one. Get the full written recipe on my blog tashcakes.com, follow me on Instagram, I'm tashcakes.taste, and find me on TikTok too, I'm tashcakes there too, but my handle is food and slow motion. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more. Give this video a like if you'd like to help other people find it. Comment down below if you'd like me to make anything in particular and I'll see you all next time. Be good, be nice and have a good week. I'm resisting the urge to just eat the other one now.